What is up everybody? Jay Nell here with my UFC 218 prediction video. It's coming from Detroit, Michigan this coming Saturday and big ups to Detroit for getting an incredibly stacked card. I literally wanted to predict the entire prelims, Felice Herring, uh, 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 Felder, the entire card is stacked but I'm sticking to the main event because I get in trouble when I do too many predictions so let's get into it. First up on the main event, the first fight of the night and it's a doozy. I am choosing Michelle Watterson to beat Tisha Torres although I'm very nervous about this pick. I think Tisha might be fundamentally stronger than her and if she's able to get her on the ground I think Michelle might be in some trouble. However I think Michelle has more tools standing and even though they have similar heights and reaches I think that Michelle fights a lot longer and she'll be able to use those tools. Also she's not one to lose too Two fights in a row who knows either way I expect these two ladies to start this card off with a bang and I'm looking forward to it it can go either way but I'm sticking with a uh, Watterson next up I'm choosing Alvarez to beat Gaethje <sighs> This fight can go either way, but I thought about it. You know, I rewatched that fight with Michael Johnson. The fact that he gassed in that second round, heavenly. I watched the entire Ultimate Fighter uh, series in the coaches challenge. The fact that uh, Alvarez dusted him in the swimming challenge and they had to swim a lot of a number of laps. I think that Alvarez is gonna have better cardio than him. And I think the longer this fight goes on, the more in favor of Alvarez. Also, Gaethje himself says, the way I fight, I know I'm eventually gonna get knocked out in the UFC. And I'm thinking some of the shots that Michael actually stunned him with if Alvarez lands those shots he's gonna knock Gaethje out but I can look it depends on which Alvarez shows up the Alvarez that's the wrestling base that's more technical that has the level head or the Alvarez that likes to brawl and take risks because Gaethje draws his opponents into his style of fighting if he does that that's his best bet to get the victory so this can go either way if I had to put money on it this would be my bet for fight of the night I think it's gonna be incredible but I am going with Alvarez Whew, we only two fights in. Next up, I am choosing Henry Cejudo to beat Sergio Pettis. I think that Henry again is going to be functionally stronger than Sergio. And with the amount that he's improving every time we see him, mind you, he's a 2008 uh, Olympic gold medalist in wrestling. He is newer to this. He is not an MMA by, his, his, that's not his base. The fact that he's growing by leaps and bounds the way he is, I think he's going to be fundamentally stronger than Sergio if he can get his hands on him. Or quite frankly, his striking has come along leaps and bounds. I know I keep repeating that, but I can't, I don't have another word for it. He's really soaking up these MMA tools and really applying them immediately. Sergio Pettis, I think, has room to grow. I think he needs to get a little stronger. I think the weight class, uh, what's this 125? There is no smaller weight class, but he even seems small for 125 sometimes. So I think in this fight, he's going to want to keep it standing, use his legs, use to keep uh, Henry away from him. Uh, but again, using the legs will open him up for being taken down. So I, he needs... Ah. I don't know how Sergio wins this fight. A submission, slick submission, trick him, bait him into bad movement on the ground. If it goes to the ground, which I think it might. Um, and maybe Sergio, maybe you should take it to the ground. I, again, ah, but I am picking, I'm picking Henry Cejudo, but you know, this, these fights are close. Sergio could pull out an upset. Picking Henry Cejudo though. Now, on to the co-main event. Super excited for this fight. And let's just talk about it, okay? We've got the former champ. Uh, Alistar Overeem, uh, former tri Strike Force champion, UFC champ. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm speaking on the fly here. I think I am wrong. Pretty sure I'm wrong. <laughs> former Strike Force champion, Alistar Overeem, the heavyweights here, 37 years old, taking on Francis Ngannou at 31 years old. And as we know, as the heavyweights mature later in life, 31 is a young gun in the heavyweight division. Now we have Alistar Overeem, who of course is a kickboxing champion as well, multiple kickboxing titles, world kickboxing titles. As he's gotten older, he has lowered his offensive output because he's extremely um, accurate. He has very high accuracy rate. He'll throw 10 punches an entire round and land seven of them and within those seven he's won the fight extreme KO power extremely accurate with his fist and with his kicks and with his knees and with his elbows again low output and I think that Francis is gonna want to make him work they're around the same height Francis has like a three inch reach advantage he needs to use that however Alistar fights long he fights long. So I don't actually think that Francis is really gonna have a reach advantage. So I think he needs to make Alistair work. He's gonna be the smaller, he's more slimmer, he's, he's got a lot of muscles. He's, he's got a body you carve out of a statue. <laughs> but but um, I think he's gonna, I hope he's been working on his cardio because I think he's gonna need to make Alistair work. I think he'll have slightly better cardio than Alistair Overeem. Uh, the punching power, they both have one hit of quitters. But I think, we know that Alistair can get knocked out. 
We know that. We know the big man's chin is not weak, but it's suspect. We don't know that about Francis Nagano. He's been demolishing. I think he might be a bit faster than Alistar as well, but again, high offensive output. That's what I, my biggest thing for, for Francis here to win this fight. You need to make Alistar work. You need to get in his face. Don't let him lay back and pick his shots, pot shot and get comfortable, because that's when that one shot will knock you out. You need to get in his face. You need to make him work. You need to make him move. Make Alistar move, make him backpedal, make him fight off his back leg. If it goes to the ground, uh, Alistar's actually got underrated wrestling. Francis, in fact, Alistar might be a better wrestler than Francis. Alistar might want to take it to the ground, actually. He might want to take it to the ground if he's not getting some success on the feet. So who, who am I going to pick to win this fight? This is extremely important. The winner of this fight can bark for a title shot for sure, especially if it's Francis. Francis has a lot of eyes on him for good reason. Again, he's young in the heavyweight division at 31 years old, so he has a lot of career ahead of him. He is a body that you can carve out of a statue. Again, and he's a heavyweight, 250, no fat, <laughs> okay? He's good looking, has a great smile, he has a great accent with a great personality. He has star quality. He can inject a lot of youth and energy into this heavyweight division that's kind of like low, 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 low. You know what I mean? You got him, you got Curtis Blaze. We're looking for, for these young guns, these young, big guys to finally break through. And a lot of people think that Francis might be that guy. I'm one of those people. And I, I like to always mention when I have a little biasness in my picks, so that I want, that's why I mentioned all of that. I want Francis to win. I want him to get to the top. I kind of want him to get that belt or have like a heck of a fight with Stipe Miocic and then later on get the belt. I think he might be that guy. And if he can get past Alistair over him, especially and how, if he can finish Alistair, or just have a, a great war with Alistair and come out on top, who knows? Again, this kid has amazing potential. Amazing potential. And for that reason, I think he's what the heavyweight division needs. And I'm picking him, Francis Ngannou. Now, main event, and we're seeing the UFC featherweight champion, Mr. Max Holloway. Max Holloway. <laughs> I forgot his nickname real quick against Jose Aldo. This is their rematch here. I'm super excited for this fight. I think we might see a different fight here. We all know how the first fight went. I believe he finished him in three rounds. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we were all like, where were the kicks, Aldo? Where were the kicks? Apparently, he had a leg injury, so no kicks. So if that injury has been fixed, I expect to see more kicks. So that might change the dynamic of this fight. Uh, Jose Aldo, of course, he's a Muay Thai black belt, Muay Thai extraordinaire, also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is highly underrated. underrated. His wrestling, also highly underrated. And again, like I think I said this in the first fight, he might want to get Max on the ground. I repeat that advice. You need to take Max down. If you can try to chop that lead leg, if you don't have a leg injury, you can kind of slow down his mobility level changes. But you might want to wrestle and grapple Max Holloway because I think Max is better than him on the feet. Even though Jose's super quick, even though he's got that dynamic Muay Thai, I still think that Max's hybrid boxer striker uh, uh, stand-up game is so nice. It's so nice. It's so slick. His angles are so sleek. He's got quick, smooth, graceful footworks. He puts together these, again, 9, 10, 11 punch, knee punch combinations that are long and pushes his opponent back across the entire octagon. He lands like 80% of it. You don't, the angles he comes from, the way he moves his body, the head movement. Again, a hybrid MMA striker boxer combination with his head movement, with his footwork. Max is amazing on the feet. And again, I think he's only 24. Correct me if I'm wrong. 24, 25? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, man, I clapped when he got this belt. I was like, all is now right in the featherweight division again with him getting this belt. And I'm picking him again. For Jose to win, hopefully the leg is, is well. Hopefully uh, uh, and he's able to chop at that league leg and throw them kicks. He's going to have to try to stifle the mobility of Max Holloway. Max blessed. Holloway, got it. <laughs> He's gonna try to stifle the mobility of Max Blessed Holloway. Give him something to think about and I think take him down. Grapple him, dirty box him. You don't want Max in space. I think Max in space lights you up. He's got quicker hand speed now. This is not the same Jose. Max in space lights him up. So Jose, if you're better, chop them league legs, stifle the mobility, try to get him in a dirty boxing, close space and try to take him down. Max, keep this standing. You got good wrestling and sleek submissions too, so I'm not I'm not scared if it does go to the ground from Max. Max is all around so well-rounded. 
so prepared for this, so deserving of this title, and a great ambassador for the sport. I'm sticking with the champ, Max Blessed Holloway. Let me know all of your picks, any injury updates. These fights could go either way. And if he does drop the title to Jose, that's fight number three, baby. And I'll be excited for that too. I'm excited for this entire card. Please look out for 15 second predictions on the prelims. Also, the Tough Enough finale is this Friday. So I will definitely be having some 15, predictions, 15 second predictions on that card for Friday. So be checking out all of my social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, on Snapchat now. Uh, subscribe, like, talk to me, take care, and goodbye.